Hey, we back. We had some technical difficulties on my end. It's all right. We here. We here. We here. Thank you for your patience. Um, welcome to Betrayed by Love. I am your host. I am Erica Janice. I have um, Renelle with me. Um, she is a whole bunch of stuff, but it's Renelle <laughs> Nelson. Um, and I am so honored to have you here. We've had a couple of conversations just kind of joking off to be honest with you. I called you this morning like I'm like way nervous like <laughs> you've been just really amazing to me so thank you for just embracing me and just being so kind and being so funny and being so authentic it's been it's been great vibes with you and I I don't think this is our last meetup so <laughs> no <problem>. um, <laughs> so this is Renelle Nelson she is a licensed marriage and family therapist mm -hmm. she is a certified sex therapist mm -hmm. and she is an infidelity recovery coach mm -hmm. um, which I know that a lot of people could probably use those resources so we will talk at the end of how people can find you um, but thank you for agreeing to to do this conversation with me we had some scheduling conflicts we had a couple of things you went to a little concert for the time <laughs> I'm in Memphis living um, so I'm so glad we were able to connect um, yeah. So all of my lives and all of my conversations, I start off with a quote and normally it's a quote about our topic, but I did not went to your website and I saw a quote that, <laughs> that just took me all the way back. So here you go. <laughs> Com <laughs> Communication is like lubrication for relationships. Communication is like lubrication for relationships. When applied abundantly and frequently, it can make everything go so much smoother. Mm -hmm. Literally the best quote ever. How did you come up with that quote? Um, I just talk about communication a lot. Um, being a sex therapist, knowing is how you apply it. If you apply it a lot and you know, abundantly and when needed, it can it can make it can make less friction, smooth, more easy. So I just kind of combine the two and communication or lubrication. <laughs> the best quote ever. And I will drop it if somebody was listening, somebody drop that quote, but literally the best ever. So thank you for that. Um, let's go into our conversation. Mm -hmm. What is betrayal? So one thing is, I'm just going to be honest, betrayal has different meanings based on the person. If you ever talk to me, I would just say, um, anybody see me like um, talking to different couples, individuals or anything, I say, what does betrayal mean to you? What does betrayal mean to your partner? So betrayal is a presumed contract that is broken, that may um, psychological damage, it can tell, you know, anything, you know, but the key word is presume because usually you don't discuss your betrayals, Ooh. right? It's that blind trust. Yes. Right? Yeah. So betrayal is what it means to you. Like betrayal to you may mean um, A, but if you talk to me, I'd be like, I don't really feel betrayal like that, but it don't matter what I say is what you feel. Ooh. And that's why betrayal should never be assumed. It should be discussed. So that's a that's like a universal question. Like, what is betrayal? We know the universal term for it, but what's the individual term? And how do you connect it to emotion and feeling? That's so good. So I don't even think I really looked at it like that, to be honest. But it makes so mm -hmm. much sense. Mm -hmm. So when you're in a relationship, in any type of relationship, I'm not just speaking of romantic, but relationship, mm -hmm. um, should this be something that's discussed up front, right? Because normally when you think about betrayal, it's it's when something happens and you're like, oh shit, I feel betrayed. But maybe the person didn't know that was part of the game. So is betrayal part of expectations too? Expectations break your heart. That's why it's good to start talking right away. So we have to understand the context. So we have different relationships, right? So yeah. you said a romantic relationship, that should be part of going deeper with your 
um, partner, like, what are you healing from? Is anybody mad that I'm talking to you? Should I, is my safety a concern of us being together? You know, is anybody pregnant? You know, some like that, some of the conversations um, should be up front. And one of the things is like, um, you know, what's your triggers for anger? What's your love languages? What do you feel betrayal is to you? Yes. That's... What does betrayal mean to you? Right? Because so many times we are so reactive and yes. we should be proactive. So in the dating phase, we have that blind faith. And we go based on blind faith, by blind trust and everything. So we assume we're on the same page. We don't know to after that trust is broken that we weren't. And that's why it really will assist the relationship and it will prevent us from picking up our feelings, right? Honesty saves people a lot of time. So why are you asking all these other questions? These are great, great conversation instigators to ask. Yes. Yeah. How soon do you feel like we should be asking these sort of questions? I think that, you know, I don't know how the relationship game work anymore. So I don't know. I think I always say communicate before coming, like oh. before, <laughs> before you get in the bed, you should get in somebody's head. So before the sex conversations, these conversations need to take place just because I need to know what betrayal is to you first. You know, are we, do we have titles or not? Remember, we don't want to assume, I want to discuss. So I don't want to be dishonest and say, because we great go to be, this is what it is, and it's not. So I think the betrayal conversation should come way before we talk about even taking it to the next level. Yeah. Because what are we want to do? Are we just hooking up, right? Is this a relationship? What do you want? These are conversations that should be had beforehand. No matter what it is, we just got to agree to it. And if we don't, we can save a lot of heartbreak. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's interesting because then you think of like, if if my betrayal triggers this and then his betrayal triggers is this, that can almost be a non-negotiable, right? That could be like, yeah. oh, our betrayals look different. Yeah. So how you move and how I move look different. That is such a powerful question. And it can be a conversation because differences doesn't always mean that we can't be together, but it's part of that conversation that this yeah. is something that we avoided some chaos. So yes. let's see how we can work together and that can show how the relationship will be. Yes. It's just different point of view. And that's yes. okay to have a different point of view is how we treat each other because of that point of view. Yeah, so good. Um, so, you know, we, we, we all know that there are just different ways to be betrayed, different people that can betray you. Um, in your profession, can you give us some examples of um, how you've personally coached people through different, like what does those betrayals look like? What are the ones that you constantly see come up? What's the repeated betrayal that, that, that seems to really penetrate certain people? I'm just going to say to keep it 100 with you, the betrayal of self. The betrayal of self is the number one betrayal that I see because we talk about, and we can talk about all the betrayals from other people, but we never talk about the betrayal of self. But we need to talk about how we betray ourselves by just assumptions, what people said, or how we avoid it, or our traumas, um, or anything like that, how we betray ourselves most nah, worse than other people betray us. Because yeah. we're taking what they're saying and making it facts and then betraying ourselves. So it's like double betrayal. Yeah. Right? But betrayal can be different things. Like the betrayal can look like I deal with a lot of family betrayal, thinking just because we're blood, we're going to be close, right? Friendships, just because you're my best friend, mean we're going to be in this forever, you're going to ride with me. Relationship is, I deal with a lot of infidelity, affairs, betrayal, going out, sexual affairs, um, cheating, whatever you want to call it, that could be another betrayal. So if you think about betrayal, it can go from family, friends, right? Romantic partner, and even at your job, being passed up on a promotion, being betrayed at your job, think you did all this work. I'm putting all this in, looking at your check, you know, all like that. That is a form of betrayal. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So good. That, um, it's interesting that you said the self-betrayal because that was one of my questions down the line. But when I was researching betrayal, it, it, it triggered myself to think that all of the betrayals that I've, that I've went through from romantic to family to jobs, the hardest one for me was the betrayal of myself. 
right. that having the certain boundaries and having certain ideas and still moving differently it's yeah. really hard to um to I'm not gonna say it's hard to overcome but it's things differently when you know no one really affected you but yourself yeah your toxic thinking and toxic thinking all like that yeah yeah so good um so how much of betrayal has to do with the um the betrayer right the person that betrays you and the betrayee I don't think that's a word but we're gonna use it we can make it a word but it makes sense okay you know so what I mean? how much does it have to do with the betrayal the, the the betrayer the person that's doing it versus the betrayee the person that's on the other end of it how much how much um does it have to do with with the person in itself that's actually doing the betrayal? I would say it depends on the circumstance, but remember the definition of betrayal. It's a presumed contract. Yeah. So if I don't know, I don't even know I'm hurting you. Ooh. Right? Yes. I don't know I'm hurting you, but if I know that that feels like betrayal to me, it could be on me. It could be on me because I didn't communicate that. Yeah. So I think it kind of based on the situation and I like to have like a no fault, no blame because that makes our bodies less traumatized and we can kind of process it more. If we put blame on it, we're going to be stuck in the who and the what instead of the how. Yeah, yeah. And the why. So I would just say that um, it depends on the circumstances, but remember, it's a presumed contract. So we yeah. can't really fault that person because um, if it's a known betrayal, maybe it's just like you knew and you communicated and you still did it. And that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah, yeah. The first betrayals are presumed that you we know we're on the same page. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, so trauma and self-betrayal, right? Mm -hmm. This is kind mm -hmm. of what we touched on a little earlier. Mm -hmm. How is trauma and self-betrayal connected? And is, or is it connected? It can be connected based on how, what kind of traumas you went through in your body um, in your environment. Do you feel like you're to blame for it? You know, self-betrayal can be self-protection. Self-betrayal can be self-care based on how you look at it. Yeah. It's when we do too much of it and it prevents stuff to, for, to heal us. Yes. Right? And we use it as a wall or we use it as a negative narrative. Yes. So trauma can be the kickstart of that because we know a lot of this stuff is a trauma response. Yeah. Yeah. So all things are not self-betrayal could be looked out bad, but if you change a little bit, it could be self-protection, self-preservation. Is the betrayal is that I'm doing stuff by my own hands that's not healing or helping me. Yes, so good. So if you've been traumatized and self-betrayal, you're really not going to know you self-betraying yourself until you get the right kind of outlook on it to say, damn, I'm, I'm betraying myself. Yeah, yeah. All right. So yeah. then I would think that it kind of go hand in hand. So when you're more aware that I am traumatized, I do have trigger, and this is how this affected me. This is how I'm, I'm doing it to myself. I think that's when the, um, the healing really begins. So I'm going to say it can, it can go hand in hand. Yeah. So I'm looking if at you think it's a trauma. Yeah, if you think the trauma is not your fault. Yeah. So I'm looking at the comments. They they listen. The best quote, that part, betrayal, lies, and expectations as well. Um, they they own here for this one. Uh, two of my favorite people from Shayla. Listen, so good. Um, let's talk about this concept that we have heard over and over and over again. It's this concept of time heals all wounds cliche true nah where we going with that one i'm gonna say nah <laughs> it's what you i'm gonna say time doesn't heal what you do in the time heals because i have do? people what you do during that time in that time with that time that yes. heals time That's doesn't heal i know people who've been betrayed at this age and they're still this age. We know trauma, I'm still dealing with people who have childhood trauma and they half of a hundred, right? So it's not time doesn't heal. Yeah. It's what you do with the time because sometimes you just get bitter and it just grows, Yeah. right? Sometimes you get stuck and when you stuck, you know, people think you get past it and you can't, you can grow through it. 
Yeah. It's just that concept of it. So it's how you think about it. And sometimes, sometimes that becomes your narrative. A lot of people don't understand that their narrative becomes so saturated that it becomes them, right? So if you take away this part, they don't know who they are. Yeah. So sometimes there's a benefit will um, keep doing this narrative. Yeah, let's talk about, so what's some narratives that you've heard that it's like, hey. you know, I'm never going to find anybody, all men cheat, you know, a love is not for me, I'm never going to do this, right, it's too scary out there, Yeah. right, I don't trust anybody, I got all girls as friends, yeah. or all men as friends, Yeah. right, that whole narrative, right, I'm a survivor, I went through a lot of stuff, you know, I'm used to surviving. So this saying, so you're going to keep creating stuff so you can survive, so you can fulfill that prophecy. Mm. Correct? Yeah, yeah. So your narrative is so saturated. I'm angry. I'm upset. So that's your, that's your narrative. So as soon yeah. as you say something, you're saying that you, you're a survivor, you're a victim, you everything like that. Your narrative becomes you and your narrative precedes you. Yeah. Right. And so if you get joined with your narrative, you're not going to change it because this is how people know who you are. So when you're challenged about change, change means something's wrong. I don't even say change anymore because change means something wrong. I say, let's explore. Let's try this on for a side because your body's going to react to change and it's going to want to hold on to it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So all those things are like that in a narrative. And as more people are healing, I always ask, but is your narrative? Is that your right. That's so oh my. narrative not healing. You know, um, I got I cheated on. And first thing you say, I don't trust anybody. I thought you was healing, sis. You right. know, like that. Right. I thought you was this. I thought you was that. I hate work. I hate this. I hate that. But, but heal your narrative too. Because Ooh. your narrative, your narrative can trigger you. Somebody drop. Somebody drop. Heal your oh, Renell. Heal your <laughs> narrative. I mean, I mean, it's. it's we healing, but why, why would we heal how we view about ourselves and how we speak about ourselves, how we get that energy about ourselves, how we change our environment? You know, we healing. And that's why I think healing is a buzzword. And I think people are so loyal to the concept, but not the action. But not the action of it. Oh, somebody drop in there, heal your narrative. That is so true. And it's one of the things that my therapist was very clear on with me is that you've been through this we healing but i need you also to for you to change your outlook too yeah and i'm not saying that it didn't happen at all See, that's what i'm saying i'm not saying it didn't happen yeah you can remember what I, not being the forefront of your mind all the time yeah right yeah. Yeah. you don't have to let everybody know you don't have to let that lead i'm not saying it didn't happen yeah at all yeah yeah we're, listen, we're not delusional, right? We're not trying to negate the fact that we've all been through things, right? Right. If, if you if you push in a certain age, you probably didn't been cheated on, you'd have been lied to, you'd have been betrayed by a friend, betrayed. Like we all have been through some stuff. However, you have to change your narrative of that doesn't mean that that's me, right? Like I don't have to necessarily become that stuff. And mm. I can heal and grow through whatever that narrative was I choose yeah. to change that and because it happened it doesn't mean that the next man's gonna cheat it doesn't mean that the next job is gonna pass you up it doesn't mean that the next friend won't show up for you yeah um you know Shayla and I talk about all the time my cousin and she's been on this platform a couple of times but we we always talk about like this self-fulfilling prophecy right where yeah, you don't want to talk about that. You don't want to talk about the self-fulfilling prophecy. Like you become what you think. So you think you're going to be cheated on? Well, <laughs> you're going to look for it. You're going to look for it. It's come yeah. hypervigilance. Hypervigilance that come with trauma. Yeah. So yeah. hypervigilance is good until we use the negative to fulfill our prophecy to prove us right. To prove to prove us right. And yeah, that's self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, yeah, it's so real. When I was talking about, um, I did a conversation last week about. Uh, rejection right and it, it was really based on like this self-fulfilling prophecy you think you're going to be rejected or you think that the rejection somehow is about like we're super um about like things that happens to me is all about me 
Yeah. Right. And I, I don't want to say narcissistic because you already know that word been been around yeah, every time. too much. Yeah. Every, everywhere. Like we all have streaks of when we think that we are somehow can escape the wounds of life, right? That's right. just not how it, <laughs> that's just not how it works. Um, and so it's like the self-fulfilling prophecy, I'm gonna be rejected. I'm not enough, I'm not this, I'm not that. My man's gonna cheat, my girl's gonna cheat. I'm not gonna get this. Yeah, well, you're not gonna get all of these things because you don't believe it. Yeah, you already claimed it. You so already claimed no, it. There's no room to explore. Yes. And we already see the worst, but we don't have this, um, think about what happens if it doesn't. And what would it look like if it doesn't? I always teach you create the thought, you can challenge the thought. The thought doesn't come from outer space. It doesn't come anywhere. It's come from your mind, the stuff you put in there. And you're able to challenge that. But too many times we've become our thoughts and we don't challenge them. We take them as word, but all we got to do is challenge them and we can right the wrong. We can do whatever we want to do, but we don't want to because we feel like that is us. That's self-betrayal. Yeah, yeah. And you believe everything you think. And it's like, why? <laughs> like, we have all of these thoughts. You know, I don't know what the number is. It's a number that I probably can't say. But it's a number of all these thoughts that you have throughout the day. And shit, nine times out of 10, they all negative. And ain't nothing positive. Ain't nothing pouring back into you. It's all of these neg- negative thoughts. And then you wonder why things aren't happening for you. You're not finding the love of your life. You're not landing the job that you know you qualify for. You put all that out in the atmosphere you're betraying yeah. again is that self-betrayal you don't think that you're enough and think about what trauma does when yeah. the outside world does you wrong you go inside Ooh. so all you have to listen to is your inner thoughts and yeah. you only trust you but you yeah. don't think about that you know what you so just outdone by how the world do you you only trust and rely on yourself and your limited beliefs your limited education if you in that self-preservation stage. Yeah, yeah. So, Cause everything is like, um, and I'm not going to throw away trauma a lot, but because we're on this topic, betrayal does cause trauma. So yeah. you get in this trauma stance and you go into the protective world. Yeah, yeah. And see, that's what happens. So you don't go out hardly anymore, you go in. Yeah. And just think about if you just stay in there, you just regurgitating all the hurt and pain, your body is reacting to this, your back, body is anxiety anxious and it's just playing more of those movies so you stay in this whirlwind or tornado yeah right yeah how much of betrayal has to do with um what you've experienced as a child it's a lot because i mean especially if you do with your caregivers your caregivers are the first people who um can sh- demonstrate betrayal you know, I thought you was always going to be there for me. I thought you was going to be provided for me. I thought you would never leave me, yeah. right? Even if, if if you had everything, I thought you was going to give me more. I thought you'd give me less. It's these, remember these um, unspoken thoughts, blind faith, yeah. blind faith, having that blind faith. We all born with that blind faith that this is because this is our mom, this is our dad, this is our cousin, this is our sibling. Yeah. Yeah. This is have to happen. And the betrayal is when they do that. And some and how that shows up again is how we project that um that parentification into our relationships. Mm. Right? We think our partner is not supposed to do this, do this, do that, because we parentify them like we parentify um our parents. Our yeah. parents never do this. Not that um that's wrong, but expectations break your heart. And we cannot, you know, we making uh people not human. And I'm not saying leave um, room for error. And it's good to expect some things, but it's when we are devastated when it doesn't happen, which a lot of us are, right? But then we bring that to our relationships. Yeah, God, that's so deep. I mean, it just even hearing you say that out loud, I, I wonder how many things as an adult, not as a child, but as an adult that I went through that I just was, shit, peel me off the floor and pass me a bottle of gin, right? that sort of pain, how much as, of it was really about what happened or was it just me replaying my childhood and the the letdowns of my childhood, the betrayals? And then once again, I'm betrayed again. Yeah. And so yeah. when you don't heal that, that child in you, then you'll take a situation that maybe is betrayal, right? But it, it's amplified. Yeah, it don't always have to be childhood. 
It could be a young adult. It could be anything. Yeah. But remember, it's sometimes it's not the circumstances, it's the emotion. The players are different, but the emotion, your body remembers emotion and reacting on the emotion. Your body can't say when you was three, this how, this is what exactly happened, but your body remember that feeling. Yeah. Remember, your body is amazing. And that's why more stuff is done. You see more people doing somatic work, tantra, everything, somatic release, recce, because your body remembers, your body keeps the score, right? So anything like that, like when I deal with a lot of betrayal, um, with couples and I have to, when I say that, I'm like, okay, what part of this is your partners, right? Yeah. Some people be like, it's just them. I'm like, okay, but sometimes it's everything else. I'm like, does this betrayal, this feeling, what does it bring up? And they go down through that. Not that taking a partner off the hook is that they putting so much on them. When they apologize, they apologize for everybody. Forgiving them is forgiving everybody. Yeah. I can't forgive you because if I forgive you, I got to forgive my uncle, my, my mama, my cousin, everything, right? I can't see it. When people can't move past forgiveness, I can't move past understanding because if I understand you, a man, I had to understand what my auntie did me like that. My pastor did me like that. So I can't understand it. So sometimes we just we just shut it down. That may be what happened. I don't speak facts for everybody because everybody's stuff is not cookie cutter. But I'm yeah. just saying this could happen. <laughs> that understanding. So that's why I see in couples, this is what I see in my practice. Yes. That it's hard to understand something because it's so much unpacking. It's so yeah. much unpacking that needs to be done. Oh, God. You busting my head open right now, man. I listen. I mean, this is what I deal with with couples. And I'm I just no, it's so good because so I, I'm gonna read a couple of comments, but so of course it was heal your narrative. I see a lot of heal your narrative. Um, you have to release the meaning that you put around the situations. Um, stop believing everything that you think. You also have to forgive yourself. Oh, it's so, 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 so good. You know, I, I talk about all the time that from, from doing these conversations and this may, I need to start counting how many conversations. This may be my ninth, my 10th, I don't know. But <laughs> after every conversation, it seems as if it comes back to self. Right. It comes back to you. Right. not negating and not trying to dismiss the things that you've been through, right. but it's about how you choose to heal right. and how you choose to overcome. Yeah. It, it, it's just, it's just, and, and even talking about betrayal, you know, I came on here like, yeah, I was betrayed. Yeah. Tell them Renee. Yeah. Tell them <laughs> I was betrayed. Forget all them. I'm mad. We mad, right, friend? We mad together, friend. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not it. It's like, okay, those things happen. Yeah. And as in and, and the words of my dad, keep living. Okay. Yeah. So there's going mm -hmm. to be more. But how do you choose to take accountability for next steps? It's something. It's something you have to do. But I, I'm. I'm also going to say this. It's also good, and I know this is hard because of the betrayal thing, to have a good support system. Yes. Oh, yes. Good have Nothing's like having a good support system because remember, if I don't have anybody to bounce stuff off of, if I don't have anybody stuff, I'm in that self-preservation mode because of the trauma, traumatic response, and I'm not yes. going out. And yes. so I'm creating a narrative that I'm staying with. I need somebody to be like, hey, think about this. That's why it's good to have a strong friend, you know, like, hey like this or a strong therapist or somebody like you can look up to that's going to keep it real with you that's just say hey what about this what about this what about this somebody like that you need that in your life because like I said nobody is an item but sometimes we we feel safe with ourselves but sometimes we got to make sure our wall is not a prison yeah. right we build up all these walls and we don't want it to become a prison I was like I understand the wall but let's just make it a chain link fence right yeah, yeah just make yeah. a chain link so you can get because remember if you have a wall you can't get the healing you deserve yes right so I'm just like everybody who got a wall up I got my wall up I got my wall up I said let's just change it to chain link so you can give and receive so you can be like that and you can kind of see you can even have a security guard 
right? And they can just let you monitor with everything like that because I don't want it to become a prison that you cannot get the healing, the love and support for people who do want you around, who do love you, even if it's a book or even if it's getting in a group or even if it's seeing a coach or a therapist, you're not willing to get that. So you're going to keep having these toxic narratives. Yeah, yeah, that's so good. And, and you know, I made a video, the, I don't know if you've seen it, but I made a video the other day and it, it it touched and spoke on how it's so important that we have a variety of people around us, right? right? Like you don't just have all the um, the friends that's going through all the romantic issues, money issues, parent issues, kid issues, right. you know them, which we yeah. all, we've been in that space, no problem. I ain't judging. But you right. also counter that with the Renells and the Ericas and, and those sort of people who can build you back up and to say, no, nah, you tripping, you tripping. And to also just give you a different insight. Do, do you agree with that? Do you, or, or do you even have that, um, that in your life where you just have a variety of different people? That I think, I think, you know, people come in your life for a reason, season or lifetime. Yeah. So I think that sometimes each season you go through that tribe will change. Sometimes yeah. you outgrow family members. Some Sometimes you outgrow friends, unfortunately, but you have to take it as no, no relationship was a waste, but it's something about energy. You're going to get it right back. Something about energy. If you let it in, you're going to get exactly what you need. It may not be the form. It can yeah. be a teacher. It could be a book. Right now it can be in a Facebook group. Yeah. But if we just take it and just see the feeling and the lesson that it brings, it's okay. So many times we want these girlfriends, we want these parties, we want that, want that. And if it doesn't come in that package, we feel like it's not right. I'm just saying sometimes that's what it is. Don't look at the messenger, feel the message. Mm, so feel good. the message. And because we so worried about what what's not in our life and we're not paying attention at what's is. So I'm saying through life, you're gonna have those ups and downs of support system. Take it for what it is. Yeah. You no, know, yeah. it's grief, it's grief and growth. It's grief yeah. and growth. Yeah. Um, let's touch on romantic betrayal for a little bit. Okay. Um, so you you hear the the two ways of being, well, there's there's more ways, but the two ways that I'm going to illustrate is the the betrayal romantically is the the emotional betrayal where the person is, you know, texting someone or confiding in them in certain ways. And then you have the physical betrayal, the, the actual sex part of it, where you're going outside of your relationship to have sex with someone else. Okay. Um, are both equally damaging? Depends on the person. Okay. Depends on the person. I have couples that sit in there that know they have, it's called boundaries. It's called contracts. You know, some people contract to have an open relationship. People have um, social media contracts. It's when you don't talk about it. Communication is lubrication. If you don't talk about it and you assume, you yeah. assume that we're on the same page, that me liking this post is devastating to you because it brings <laughs> up how your ex person, you know, your ex boyfriend or girlfriend betrayed you, but you can, uh, one person can't pay another person's debt. It's not no. fair to them right so i would say that that's a conversation it's, yeah. it's as devastating as the conversation that needed to be happening yeah right yeah. and sometimes yeah. when that happened and you feel like you know you had sex with somebody else are y'all in a monogamous relationship you know did you assume it or did you discuss it yeah right so it's a lot, a lot of things and a lot of people say you should just know common sense is not common yeah right yeah. and you're just gonna assume but some people do um, may tell lies. I'm saying honesty and transparency are keys. Yeah. Yeah. So then that's another person. It's not what they did. It's why you weren't honest about it. Yeah. So dealing with like betrayal and everything is the honest dishonesty and the lies that hurt people more than the act. Yeah. Yeah. So the cheating aspect, the, the having the, the physical intercourse with another woman, say that a person chooses to still stay with their mate, right? What are some ways that they can overcome this sort of betrayal if they if they choose to still be with the person? If I would just ask them, why do they want to be with them? Because are you going to be with them to torture them? Are you mm -hmm. going to be with them to heal the relationship? Are you going to be with them to reconnect or reestablish? Sometimes you don't re want to reconnect because your relationship was trash in the first place. 
right? So do you want to reconnect, reestablish, um, learn? There's so much stuff that you want to do. I always ask my clients, what's the commitment and why they want to stay? You know, sometimes you want to stay because you don't want nobody else to have them. Sometimes you want to stay because y'all look good on paper. Why do you want to stay? And that's going to be your commitment level. What? <laughs> Wait a minute, because I be thinking people be staying because they really want to be with this person. That's not always the agenda. No. I wasn't ready for that one. It's not because you authentically want to make it work. No, right? no. You just, oh my God. No. People stay for different reasons. Wow. Ask yourself, how, who in, who listening has been betrayed and they still mad? They say they want to stay, but they can't, they mad. They still not having sex. They still not talking. Everything is triggering them. Why are we here? <laughs> Why are we here? Why are we here? <laughs> I love it. So true. It's and I'm so just, true. and I'm, and I'm the culture therapist with an ass because I don't want to waste anybody's time. I and mean, you deserve, you know, everybody deserves love. You know, if you don't think this for you and you can't heal from it, peace be with you, right? <laughs> if you don't trust them, peace be with them. But if you want to work it out, I have to challenge your mindset to even get through that. And first, you got to be open. You got to be open to healing to see if you should stay you should go you have to be open to forgiving yourself and not forgiving them what they did but forgiving them so that um the action don't outweigh both of you yeah right so it's that process yeah and if you don't want to do that process that's good it's no right or wrong to it yeah you know what's good for you but if you want to stay it's time to get the things to not only heal and sometimes getting these conversations out Sometimes learning about these conversations will assist you to determine if you should stay or if you go. But if you stuck, if you don't know, you're not going to know if you don't let nobody in to help you. Yeah. So, so is that, is your delivery the same for people who are married and not married? Like your, the questions, the way. Same thing. Same, same thing. thing. Okay. Same. Cause you know, marriage is a whole little, you can't go about it. You know, we might, we might throw, we might throw some scriptures in there. We might throw the vows or something like that. What's your vows? You know, we can do all that. You know, it's no <laughs> cookie cutter approach. But yeah. It's yeah. never going, it's never going to derail. Like, why are you here? What's your commitment level? If they say, don't, don't know, I say, I thank you for being honest. Yeah. Let's explore that. Let's explore that. Yeah, that's so good. Let's explore. What's, what do you feel like you can do? Can you picture yourself saying like this? Can you picture? Well, let's give it a week. Let's give it two weeks. Let's give it a month. How you doing now? Right? I don't trust them. What percent is it? What do you trust them with? Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe so next week you can give them 5%. You may be at 10% in two years. Can you live with that? Right. This is just about exploring, but it's not about force. Yeah. It's more people staying together than people talk about. Renell, can you um can you be with someone who you truly don't trust? I mean, I know you could be with them, but can you truly be happy with a person and happy and fulfilled in a relationship where you truly just don't trust your partner? <laughs> um, I don't know I don't know if this is going to light it up I'm going to say yes um, because it's what you choose to do okay because it's what you're loyal to are you loyal to the paper, the kids the facade what's your real loyalty is it in a relationship right I'm going to say a lot of people are doing it every day but are they authentic with it? I can't tell you that. Only they can tell you that. But I'm not going to say, people say, you can't be with nobody who trusts. I'm saying, who are you loyal to? Are you loyal to the trust? Or that house? Right? And I say this because I see it all the time. Can it be done? Yes. Is it healthy? No. But I can't say what's healthy for me may not be healthy for you. 
If you feel like, hey, this is what's good for me right now, so be it. It's when we start telling each other what's healthy and what's not when the chaos starts. Yeah. So I'm going to say it depends on the person. I have a lot of sexless marriages. I have a lot of roommates. Ooh, not the, not the, the, uh, the cohabiting. I got, a, they I got a lot of best friends. I got a lot of situations. Not cohabiting, coexisting. Coexisting, yeah. sorry. Yeah, uh-huh. no. But they, I mean, they're loyal to something else and it has nothing to do with trust. Yeah. Right? So, it, it, so it's the agenda. What is this really about? Are you really in it for the person? Or are you in it for something else? And, that's- and what's so cool about it is an agreement because y'all contract and y'all discuss it. And some of those contracts are better than anything because y'all talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's yeah. when you don't talk about it and say, I'm not going to trust you and your partner trying to win back your trust and you're never going to have it. That's where the dishonesty and the chaos come in because it's not fair to you or them. Yeah, yeah. Um, are there any ways we can mitigate our exposure to um, betrayal? Conversations. Conversations and understanding you. Doing a self audit on you. What are your betrayals? How can people lose your trust? Ooh, yes, that's right. So- understanding you. Yeah. How can you get in a relationship and you don't even understand you? How can you talk about betrayals if you don't understand what what how you feel betrayed? That's so good. Oh my god. The same sense about how or well, the rouses you and make you wet. What are you healing from and what's your betrayal? Yeah. Yeah. Same pleasure. So good. Same pleasure. Yeah. right it's all what you say and what you do but I think it's a point of understanding so I'm just going to say um, a self audit and self understanding because you are the foundation of any relationship you get in yeah that's so good um this conversation has been incredible I'm I'm so, I ain't saying it because I'm in it I'm so like just even thinking about it like this is so good because like I said earlier it's really about you and knowing you and being able to articulate that to another person Mm -hmm. and if they betray you then then you move differently but a person doesn't necessarily know that they're betraying you if they ain't know that the betrayer like that you had boundaries with it you you and allowing space in do you have space for a relationship yeah can you release something right? Are you yeah. holding on to this narrative? Can you release? So it's about you, but that support system and nurturing and everything else. I don't want to put it all on you because your environment is key also. What, yeah. you know, guard your gates, what you look at, what you smell, what you ingest, yeah. right? What you watch, what you hear, what you put in your body, on your body, all of those things. Yeah. Environment is key. Health is your wealth. All that comes into um, healing and understanding and being able to communicate more effectively. Yeah. Because I don't want to put everything on you or I'm not going to put everything on your partner, but together y'all can be a mission, right? That can be yeah. part of it. If we make, if we normalize stuff like this, we can stop picking up a lot, lot of feelings and we can kind of end this. Yeah. Um, are there, are there some betrayals that are just absolutely unforgivable like have you seen any betrayal that you that you've coached through therapy through yeah that I mean absolutely a no or or as a therapist and I don't mm -hmm. know I don't know it may not just I don't know I'm gonna ask the question you figure out how how we gonna answer it but are there some things that you would tell a person that because you were betrayed in this way sir or ma'am that's a no that's a no for me is there any betrayals like that that i would that i couldn't help yeah that you couldn't help i would say one thing is i'm gonna cre- always create a safe safe and nurturing environment to figure that out and explore them i'm always going to be honest and transparent with them and it's all about us working together as a team with a community to help them so i'm not going to say anything um i'm not saying we can't get over it but you can grow through it that thorn is still going to be there right yeah. but I'm not saying like that I deal with the worst um yeah. affairs I did you know um molestation rape you know 
by a family member, you know, just people going stuff with the birth mothers, you know, all that stuff. So I think that it comes from a safe, nurturing environment, understanding, seeing life as in a different view and just having that good, good, good education and whatever they want, providing that to them in session, out of session. Yeah. Right. Only they can choose. Sometimes they don't have to forgive. Right. If this is a betrayal, they can't get over. That's fine. We don't force healing on anybody. Yeah. You know, I don't force people to stay. I don't um, force people forgiveness. I just say, forgive yourself so you can release the power. Yeah. yeah. So if people say, I can't get over this, I say, say less. What do you want to do? That's What's what you can't do. What, can, what do you want to do? Yeah. What's going to make you have or create the optimal lifestyle you can have while also not having this? Are you going to yeah. compartmentalize it? Are you going to externalize it? Just helping them know what to do with it as they progress yeah but I can't make anybody do anything or nor would I tell them that you have to do this or this is it's, it's unavoidable yeah so um when I was about I think I was like 14 I was violated by my aunt's boyfriend at the time mm -hmm. and we know that there have been a lot of people that have been violated by older people or just people right. in general, right? Let's just right. say people in general. Okay. How would you suggest that a person work through those sort of betrayals? So it's so many layers to that. And um, it takes more than just, you know, I can't give you anything because I want to be really sensitive because it's the betrayal of a family member, betrayal yeah. that's you know, from your aunt. It's so many different of betrayal that's in there. And then it's abuse. Mm -hmm. That's sexual abuse. That's trauma. That's rape. It's so much in a time with that. But yeah. as far as just understanding and just saying, I'm glad that you're able to talk about it. I'm glad that you know it wasn't your fault. Yeah. And just making sure you got that soft landing to support you in that as you unravel and understand that. Yeah. So also just validating that and assisting you with taking your body back and assisting you with taking your power back and letting that person who violated you hold the bag. Yeah. Yeah. Just letting you go back and just say you couldn't do anything, understanding the power structure and everything like that. And just really normalizing what's going on with your body to make your body release so you can be more relaxed, so you can have more understanding. Oh, so it's the body released. Oh, that's deep, Renee. It's the body. It's the body. That's why people go to um, like different things. You hear EMDR, DBT, you know, Reiki, energy work, a lot of trauma work because it's that release because your body wants you to remember. So mm. your body is all, it's about protection. Yeah. So all the triggers, all the um, nightmares or flashbacks is your body trying to make sense and your body want to remember. So yeah. along with that, with some supportive people that's listening to you and there to nurture you, that would assist you in your healing. Yeah. And taking it. back you. Yeah. yeah. Somebody violated how to take that back and let them and not hold their transgressions. You know, you hear me talk about that a lot. We can't um, hold, make people transgressions ours. They made their mistakes. They do their thing. We cannot control that for them. Yeah, that's so good. And, and for anyone who's listening, um, that is such a sensitive subject. And I, when I was asking people like questions about, you know, uh, our conversation and what people kind of wanted to talk about or any questions that they wanted me to ask, you know, it had a lot to do with infidelity and a lot to do with being violated as a child. And so mm -hmm. my story isn't unique, right? Um, but, it, but it's precious. And so thank you for touching on that. And I know that you deal with that a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's unfortunate, but again, we get to choose how we move past that and how yeah. we want our narrative to be, right? Yeah. 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 Well, thanks for uh -oh. sharing. Thanks for sharing that too. Absolutely. Um, so let's talk about ways that we can start healing from betrayal. Okay. What are, what are some ways where people can kind of, maybe give them a, a, not necessarily a checklist, but what are some things people can start doing to say, I want to move past any sort of betrayal. Mm -hmm. What does that look like for you? I think the first thing to sit down and practicing self-healing and self-care. I'm really going to 
instead of self-care because sometimes we try to, um, we're on E already and we can't really heal ourselves on E. I would just say making sure you exercise, you eat it right, you got a safe nurturing environment, you have a safe place to unravel, you have a support system, you know, have some st somebody to bounce stuff off of, a friend, a therapist, a coach, um, anybody you want mentor that will assist you in this thing. And then I will also ask you to just to start sitting in the feelings and see what part of it really sit there and just brain dump and see what is it that I can't get under over what does it look like why does it feel like that really think because you can't um heal what you can't reveal right so you just blocking it all together but really being able to regurgitate just throwing all out and just really get a piece of paper and you know get out what it is and then let the chips fall where they may and just take stuff bit by bit you know, practicing self-forgiveness every day, even with an affirmation, a mantra, loving yourself, hugging yourself, you know, practicing self-love, giving yourself flowers and everything like that so your body can be more relaxed as you're dealing with this stuff, Yeah. right? But it's not, it's, it's steps and it, it becomes rituals because you're going to have unravel a lot of stuff that it is. Just being very, giving yourself grace, self, everything you want to give to somebody else, give it to yourself first. First, give it to yourself for that's so good and make it a ritual because self-care sometimes we deplete ourselves before we go to self-care so I like self-maintenance making sure it's part of maintaining that because it can go back so you don't always have to go to self-care let's change it to self-maintenance and as you unravel these things you better to do it as full because don't try to do it when you deplete it already because all your body going to do is show you things that reason why you should be really really uh, why this is what it is so it's not yeah. going to work so really just don't do it when you have anxiety in your body do it when you relax and you feel good yeah good good I hope you guys took note I'm definitely taking notes um, of that that's so good thank you um You're for welcome. everything um one of the things that I've, I've gotten away from but I'm trying to get back into it I have to remind myself so I wrote it down is asking each of my guests before we leave what is one thing that you absolutely love about Renee like one thing you love I don't care what it is but this part I love it what's one thing you love about you love about me I love my perseverance that I change my um healing I'm healing out loud so other people can see that they can do it so I love that in me um, I love that I changed my problems into gold. I was able to do that with the help of spiritual help and the support and the love of my life. I'm able to do that and able to stand here and sit here today and be, be able to be not attached to emotion and give you what you need and still know if I need it, I got a place to heal. So I love that. Yeah, good for you. So proud of you. Perseverance mm -hmm. would be so. <laughs> um, where can people find you? Mm. So you can find me um, at Kaleidoscope Services, LLC. That's for therapy. Um, I am a therapist in Arizona and Wisconsin. Every place after that, you can find me at Renell E. Nelson. Um, dot com. That's my coaching site. And if you're on Instagram, um, at Affair Aftercare or at Noir Sex Therapist, Sex Therapist, um, no E and sex. Okay. And I will put all of this in our message when I'm done because that'll take me for a minute. But thank you, Renelle, for your Thank time. you for having me. Thank you for your grace at the beginning with my, my difficulties. Um, yes, breathe right through it. <laughs> had to reroute my whole router. Um, but thank you for your thank you for your time. And no I'm problem. very serious about that. Like it's 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 a Sunday, you have a family, and you still chose to give me a small part of your day and I don't take mm -hmm. any one time um for granted so thank you I hope you will come back on here again we gotta have another I time. will I will plus when you said you was my my girl I love Shayla you was like I'm Shayla cousin I say say less say <laughs> best less. friends listen we got <laughs> I have seen some pictures of us best friends grew up as cousins girl listen we we go hey, back. You, you name drop I'll be like say less let me hear <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I, I appreciate her for even connecting us. Um, she is literally my best friend, but she's also my cousin, and she is familiar to this platform. So thank you for um, 
uh, just agreeing to be here. I, I no problem. Thank you for the space. Yes, thank you. And you have a beautiful weekend. Go to sleep, Grandma. You talking about you ain't doing nothing today, so bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what time is it? Yes, the bed Five is calling me time. now. Five, Five o'clock. Hey, it's ten somewhere. I'm going to bed. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you so much. Okay. 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 Bye bye. Bye.